All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, we wanted to take some time out tonight. This is a brainchild of C. White and, and Joe Cerruti to pay a special tribute to Mr. Wilcox. Yeah. He served as our assistant director for a long time. Uh, it's debatable exactly what, but according to Will, it was 1979 to 19, or 2014. This is about 35 years or so. Nice. Um, before we start, I just want to say that we do have some guests here tonight. Uh, some are on the right just with us. I just want to, you have to clap right now. I just want to say some people that came, uh, especially, uh, we think, to see Will. Uh, Paul Breyer, Chuck Botts, Len Dornberger, Perry Jordan, Scott Taylor, Jerry Topaski, Barry Galloway, Bob Bronstein, Mike Geipel, and Doug Smith. Well, I don't call this This Is Your Life, but we tried to put together a little program for you tonight that um, will help you remember all the years that you did your thing. We're gonna have some, I'm going to have someone, I want to have someone come do some remarks for you, and I figured who could be, who's someone as iconic as Will to stand on the same platform as he? So we have someone, I just want to give you a little bit of information on him. He's a 38 year member of the Harmonizers, he's been on the front row for 35 years. He's competed in every chorus contest the Harmonizers have entered since 1979, which includes 24 contests. He's a five time district quartet champion and a 15 time international quartet competitor. He served as the music performance vice president for Scott Warner, Richard Llewellyn, and Joe Cerruti. Uh, and he sang with Will in, a court, in one of Will's early quartets in the 1980s, early 80s. And he and uh, Jerry are close friends, both Will and Anna Ruth, all these years. And I don't know what to say about this, but he's let Will put his hands in his mouth for 35 years in his famous office. So <laughs> please uh, welcome Steve Warner. The year was 1991 during the famed annual Harmonizer Spring Tonic show, A Night to Remember, A Dragon's Tale. A young and dashing knight, Sir Alden the Allwright, played by Wilcox, stepped to center stage and uttered the immortal word, Hark! Hark! <laughs> he went on to say, Hark, be still my beating heart. She's the picture of beauty and not a bad hoofer. We had to enunciate very well there. She's the picture of beauty, not a bad hoofer. I must win at her hand in the tournament on the morrow. He was speaking of his true love, Princess Prunel. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Later that became ARG, and I think many of us already know why that happened. So I'm proud to stand here this evening on behalf of the great Harmonizer family to help honor and pay tribute to our dear friend Wilcox for his incredibly successful tour as an assistant director for the Harmonizers. And please welcome his very lovely, very tolerant, and certainly better looking half, Anna Ruth. She too is a picture of beauty. According to stone tablets chiseled by our then chapter secretary, Chris Morrow, we'll join the chapter in 1979. The very next year, Scott Werner provided him with the opportunity to serve as our assistant director, a position he held for more than three decades under four musical directors, Scotty, John Hull, Richard Llewellyn, and of course, Joe. His long <laughs> tenure has added significantly to the program, and he has been an essential ingredient in our continued success. Will's chorus warm-ups are legendary. He was always known, he, he will always be known as <laughs> the mad clapper, which I assure you is not a medical condition. He <laughs> <laughs> still gave great thought every week to what he was doing. He incorporated scales using words from the songs that we were learning, and he always sprinkled in for good measure, you know, a yaha ha and a yo-ho-ho every week, which was the origins of his pirate routine. Yes. <laughs> but warming up the course was not limited to weekly rehearsals. He's done this for us the world over in many prestigious and sometimes unusual places. Certainly in Carnegie Hall, Kennedy Center, Supreme Court, buses to and from contest test venues, on the Great Wall of China, in France, in Germany, in more schools and concert halls than one could possibly list, even on airline flights. He's truly our warm-up king. And Will has also taken a very active role as a director in this course during many annual shows, sing-outs, caroling, and of course, 
every Tuesday night as we welcome our guests. Now, Will's barbershop career has not been limited to just the chorus. He is a highly accomplished quartet singer. Two foursomes of particular note, and there were many. One was the great a and Chord Company, who were known for the World War II repertoire for wearing original and very itchy wool army uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> and Will's quartet buddies in that was Dave Wilk, Ricky Savage, and three different basses, Bob Johnson, Craig O'Dell, and yours truly. Take a look at the thing that Marty Banks did out, outside, and you'll see some of those pictures. Hijinks now was a favorite district quartet for many years and well known for their fun songs, accordion playing by a strange tenor, <laughs> crazy antics including once entering stage in large bouncing balls wearing colorful parachute pants, which Will still wears in the bedroom, I think. <laughs> that of course included Gary Plogg, Chip Guffey, Howard Hull, and hijinks went on to win the Mid-Atlantic District Quartet Contest in 1999 and competed in multiple international competitions. Throughout Will's 36 plus years in this chapter, uh, he has succeeded in a great many roles and activities. Just to name a few, he is, in his quartets, he's won uh, championships in the Southern Division and the Mid-Atlantic District, and these quartets have been featured on 18 Harmonizer annual shows. He's earned four gold medal corset medals, uh, and I believe almost every other medal that we've ever won. He's the lead section leader for 13 years. He's a longtime front row member, probably 20, 25 years. I've lost track of that. He sang in the VLQ Cameron Station. And we have honored him in the past with multiple awards. The Spirit of Harmony Award in 1991. The Oz Newgarden Memorial Award in 2002 and the Harmonizer's big award, the Memorial Award, in 2006. So let me say what we all absolutely know for certain. Will Cox is known and loved by everyone associated with the Harmonizers. How could you not? He is a talented vocalist, a wonderful teacher, and an easy to follow director. He is helpful to those in need, he's friendly, he's always cheerful, He's steadfast in his dedication and support to the chapter. He is unassuming and gentle in personality and a true gentleman. Will is the epitome of what it is to be a harmonizer. So Will, thank you for your unselfish and your timeless service to the Alexandria Harmonizers through all these many, many wonderful years. <laughs> we are all better to have known you. Come on, come on along and listen to the lullaby of Broadway, the hip, the hip hooray and ballyhoo, the lullaby of Broadway, the, the rumble of a subway train, the rattle of the taxis, the, da the daffodils who entertain, and Angelos and Maxis. When a Broadway baby says goodnight, it's early in the morning. And Manhattan babies don't sleep tight until the dawn. Good night, baby. Good night, milkman's on his way. Sleep tight, baby. Let's call it a day, hey, come on along and listen to the lullaby of Broadway, the high, high the high and boop -a doo the lullaby of Broadway, the band, the band begins to go to town and everyone goes crazy, you rock, you rock a by your baby, wow, 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 till everything gets hazy. Hush, bye, I'll buy you this and that. Do you hear what daddy saying? And, babe, and baby goes home to a flat to sleep all day. Good night, baby. Good night, milkman's on his way. Sleep tight, babe. Let's call it a day.
listen to the lullaby of old. A lullaby, Broadway. it's singing Broadway, oh Broadway, oh Broadway, oh Okay, um, as, as Steve mentioned, uh, Martin Banks put a wonderful display board out front uh, that really summarizes Will and Tyre Harmon as a career, and if you have not seen it, I encourage you all to go out and take a look at it when we do cake. We're now going to uh, show you a, a, a video, and it's going to be uh, some people who wanted to pay, you know, who wanted to talk to you personally who could not be here, but we thought you might enjoy. Hi, everybody. I got this crazy call to get my thoughts and impressions about somebody named Will Cox. He was really a quiet, unassuming guy who just kind of wrangled his way into the music team. Who would want to be on the music team? But he did. He became quite a icon in the harmonizer history. As I remember him, he was a very reliable, always dependable, always there to do, step up to any task that you wanted to ask him to do. That's the Wilcox I remember. He did it for 34 years. Chris Buchler or somebody ought to look that up. That might be a record in the society again. Maybe we can get another point somewhere. <laughs> I remember him mostly, uh, even into current years, uh, doing, uh, doing the warm-ups. He was the warm-up guru. He could take a, a, a warm-up exercise and turn it into fun. Isn't that unimaginable? Who wants to do warm-up? We just want to sing the song. And by the time uh, he was finished, he had it ready for the director, no doubt whatsoever. You know, uh, the other thing I remember him for is that he was always there directing Al Harmonizer Welcome Song. I found this. It's the manuscript when I wrote it, and it says at the bottom, which I used to do, would be to initial it and date it. It says 7, 1988 is when that was arranged. So it hasn't been going in exactly 34 years, but it's been going a good long time. I owe a lot of that to uh, Will Cox, who's kept it going all these years. So, Will, I want to... Congratulate you on your retirement of 34 years. My best wishes to you, buddy, and uh, see you all soon. Hi, everyone. I wish I could be with you in person, but I'm glad to be able to participate even long distance in this night of tribute to Will Cox and his contributions to the harmonizers over the years. Will had already been an assistant director for some time when I joined the chorus 25 years ago. And so it's a little difficult for, to, for me to imagine coming to a rehearsal someday without Will being called down front uh, with the traditional call of Hark to lead us in warm-ups. And there aren't that many of us around anymore who remember why it is that Hark is associated with Will from his role in one of our spring tonic shows back in the early 1990s. But the fact that for all of this time he put up with that sort of silly tradition with good grace is a tribute to his character and one of the reasons why he's been so special to the group over the years. Uh, I realized not that long ago that there's something in common between his role in the harmonizers of doing warm-ups and the profession he chose for himself of dentistry, namely that you could skip both of them if you want to, but there are costs to doing that. Uh, and Will had uh, the talent of making uh, the warm-ups fun and educational uh, at the same time and uh, has, has really been an integral part of the musical success that we've enjoyed uh, over decades. So Will, I wish I could be there to, to shake your hand and also to be part of the group singing the last time you get us to do Ya Ha Ha, uh, but I'll imagine that day and be thankful for everything that you've done for the harmonizers over the years. Thanks much and see you soon. Hi, Will. Congratulations on an amazing achievement. I'm sorry I can't be with you tonight. I'm sure you all are having a wonderful time. 
Uh, you know, one of the really special qualities about you, Will, is that you do something that every director hopes their assistant director can do, which is to lead the chorus in performance with pretty much no rehearsal time at all. And you always did an incredible job. The guys have a ton of confidence in you, and uh, you led us to a lot of successful performances. You were a great friend to me when I first came to the Harmonizers. Uh, you provided so much support and consistency. All of the guys loved being directed by you. Uh, you were just an amazing resource. Uh, I'm really grateful for you making me feel so welcome and helping us be successful during those years. Uh, I have to say that <laughs> maybe my favorite memory of you is stocking cap, Christmas time, when you threw up the sash. <laughs> Have fun tonight. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Will, thanks for all your service with the Alexandria Harmonizers and your inspiration and musical uh, leadership for all those years that you have provided them. And quite frankly, it goes beyond just the Alexandria Harmonizers. It's the entire Barbershop Harmony Society for that enthusiasm and inspiration that you give, not just locally, but to the rest of the organization. So thanks again, and best wishes to you, and uh, hope to see you around Ring and Accord soon. Thanks. Hey, well, happy 34 years, my gosh. Even though you're waking me up in the middle of the afternoon, uh, I, I'm, I'm pleased to do this for you, just to say hey, and, and it's hard to believe that you've been doing that for 34 years. Didn't Anna Ruth have anything else for you to do? Well, of course, could he? You were the best assistant director that I had. Your warm-up sessions for the chorus, I think, were a big part of the success of the chorus. I hope that uh, your next 34 years, you decide to do uh, even more. Uh, if you ever decide to move to Florida, come on down, I can use you. Congratulations on, uh, on your 34 years. And uh, if you want to come and join our chorus, you would really uh, reduce the average age a bit from deceased to embalmed. Again, have a great evening, and my best to you and to Anna Ruth. I think you missed Scotty's last line. He said you would decrease the average age from deceased to embalmed. <laughs> Of course, we all know Anna Ruth, and we all know uh, Anna Ruth puts up with a lot over the years. She loves barbershop, and she's probably seen more contests, quartets, and practices than, you know, than there's been snow in Boston this winter. So, on behalf of the chorus, Anna Ruth, um, if you could come up for a second, please. No, I'm not even... good. This is actually something that was handmade for you by one of the leading artisans in Northern Virginia. And she just happens to be married to one of our members. Uh, Kim Fess made this for you, so. And I, I think you're gonna like that. And, yeah, go ahead. A new car! <laughs> oh, Mark will frame it. Very nice. That goes over the horse. <laughs> <laughs> Carefree, 
guy who likes to smile and easy to get along with everybody loves Will, but what you all may not know is Will has a serious side to him. No! <laughs> no. And so what we've done is we put together a short video that has some of his more dramatic uh, presentations. So, you know, you need to really watch and listen to the inflection of the way he characterizes his character and uh, just watch and enjoy it. Jack, they're pirates! We prefer the term maritime non-state actors, actually. <laughs> You're pirates? I. You? Yes, I. I. <laughs> what about them? Are, are they pirates? Are they pirates? Of course they are. <laughs> Even him? Yes, he's a pirate. He's a free agent from Pittsburgh. <laughs> I read it myself, it's right here. Wanted pirate with horrible crew. It says wanted pilot for holiday cruise. <laughs> we pirates, we don't read very well. What about leases for eight tiny reindeer? Mm, I thought that said pieces of eight. <laughs> And briny rain gear. <laughs> but we pirates, we don't care. You see, we are rough men. <laughs> and we lead rough lives. <laughs> and wear jewelry. Accessorizing makes it all worthwhile. not be the pirate, pirate way. We see the snip, the ship for leaking and stooling. <laughs> and bagging grooty. Captain, Christmas isn't about grabbing booty. Maybe not at your house. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I seem to have lost my hook. Jack, would you happen to have a hook handy? I give you the pirate captain. was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in the hope that St. Nicholas soon would be there. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in the hope that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced on their heads. <laughs> Ma and my kerchief and I and her cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn, there rose such a clang, 
I wanted to see where the clatter was at. I sprang from my bed, and, and I stepped on the cat. <laughs> Away to the window I flew like a flasher. Flash, flash. <laughs> Tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. <laughs> when what, with my wondering eyes, did appear but a big bag of Cheetos and a six pack of beer. <laughs> oh, no, that's, I'm sorry. That, that's for the midnight show. <laughs> and what, but I heard him exclaim. I heard him exclaim. Shout as they rode out of sight. With justice for all and to all a good night. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Serious moments. Uh, uh, Will, you might have noticed in the video some all of our directors was one missing, but you've got him in flesh and blood here. Mr. Joe Cerruti would like to say a few remarks. Just a few. Thank you. Oh boy, as I prepared my thoughts for this evening, I wondered how, uh, what can I say about a man who has influenced harmonizer culture for decades? And then I realized that Terry Reynolds was not going to be here. <laughs> I joke, it is a huge, huge honor uh, for me to be here presently to uh, honor Will and recognize him for his accomplishments with the Alexandria Harmonizers. And for all of us, uh, he's not dead. <coughs> so many people are talking about him like, Will was the greatest <laughs> We all know he's not dead. He's sitting right here. We happen to be Mr. Torres. Breathe well. <laughs> At least I think so. Um, for, for almost 40 years, he has successfully navigated himself through the ego jungle of four music directors <laughs> and shared his skills with multiple uh, generations of harmonizers. What's even more amazing is to consider the impact Will has had on the greater barbershop community through dozens of harmonizers and guests who have moved on to other chapters around the world, sharing all of Will's warm-ups and all of the great techniques that he has shared with us when they come to witness the great Alexandria harmonizers. And while Will has given so much to the harmonizers, I think we should all agree that one of his greatest contributions, as we've said a number of times, to the chapter is not was the night before Christmas, but that was up there. Uh, was was obviously his facilitating our, our warm up routine every week. Uh, I say that not because it's been said over and over and over again, and he's been our warm up guy for a long time, but we don't realize what the warm up does for a successful chapter. Um, it's not something that we do while we wait for Eric Bottom <laughs> to show up to rehearsal. <laughs> Um, you know, in, in, it's something that I was taught very early on and something that I continue to teach uh, along my travels is that um, successful warm-up, the successful rehearsals start with successful warm-ups. Um, and there's no one that, that could have been a better role model for me to learn that and see that when I came to the chapter eight years ago than, than Will. You know, I, uh, I used to... When, when I was much younger and newer to the chorus, I used to tell Will what I thought about his warm-ups and how he should change them and make them better. <laughs> and I quickly stopped that when I, when I realized that um, Will was a master at molding the clay that he was given. If 20 guys showed up at 7 o'clock, if 45 guys showed up, or 120 guys showed up at International, <laughs> Whatever he was handed, and sometimes he was handed something pretty awful, <laughs> he worked with it until it was at the harmonizer standard. And it was something that I came to realize the longer I directed this chorus that the, the, we always have these schedules that says warm up is 15 minutes. Warm up ends at 7.16 on the dot. And Terry will come out and say, 
And one thing we always realized with Will was that if Will went three more minutes over, it was because the chorus was not ready. He was not going to turn the chorus over until it was ready. And that is a really incredible and unique thing uh, to have someone who understands the, the, the level to turn a chorus over and be able to have a successful evening. Um, the first, the very, very first time I came to the harmonizers, I can close my eyes and remember every single detail. And um, we, we went out to, to a dinner and, and they grilled me with questions. I came to the rehearsal uh, and, and auditioned for the, for the job and then uh, we all went out uh, onto King Street for an opportunity for me to ask questions and I had asked as the prospective director of the chorus, what about my musical support team? Uh, tell me more about my musical support team. And while there was, well, there's this guy and this guy, and you have this and you have that, they kept coming back to Will. And But there will always be Will, you know? And Will will always do whatever you ask him to do. Will is the most reliable guy that we can have, and um, he'll never try to steal your job. Ah. <laughs> um, but as important as that is, Will, is, as it's been said a number of times, is more than just a warm-up guy. He is a, a most dedicated chorus singer and performer, a successful quartetter, as we've seen, uh, who has represented us, our chapter, at numerous district and regional uh, and international conventions. A front row dancer, an assistant director, a section leader, a member of the audition team, a friend to so many, and a role model in so, so many ways. Will has been on the front line of interaction with our guests to properly voice place them before they come to the risers at their very first visit, and I could not imagine a friendlier face for those guests to meet before they hop up on the risers. which is one of the most intimidating things you can do as a guest. How many of you were voice placed by Wilcox? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Above all, we all know that he is uh, the most reliable and dedicated and selfless man uh, that, that any of us have, have met. And when you look around the room at some of the incredible people we get to work with every week, that just makes it even more remarkable. Uh, and even more uh, important that we take the time to honor him tonight while he is not dead. <laughs> <laughs> Anna Ruth, while we greatly appreciate Will's time and talent, we know that time at home is just as valuable, and we thank you for sharing your husband with us for almost 40 years. Speaking for the three directors before me, we could never have accomplished what we have without him. And Will, I hope that we have been able to provide you with positive and memorable experiences that you will recount for the rest of your very long life. <laughs> because you are such a huge reason that we have been fortunate to experience so many of the moments that makes it great to be a harmonizer. Thank you very much. There are a number of people who, from out of the area, out of the state, that uh, wanted to send you their personal thoughts, memories, whatever, and Dean Rust graciously uh, has been collecting those emails from people, and we put what we had into a notebook here. I'm going to give you this now that you can look at your own time and read through. Next, I want to introduce Mark Klostermeyer, who has a special gift uh, that he's handcrafted for Will. That's a hint. Yeah, I wonder what it could be. It's suitable yeah, for framing. You know, it's always a giveaway when I walk up here. Uh, I've uh, been fortunate to be able to do a lot of tribute pieces to uh, individuals uh, uh, in the time that I've been with the harmonizers. But this has really been a very special uh, uh, project to work on. So, uh, Will, wanted to give this to you. All the directors that you served under, including Terry Reynolds, by yeah. the way. Yeah. So, uh, congratulations. Thank you.
Okay, I'd like to bring uh, Steve White and Joe back up for a special presentation. Will, Will, there's no possible way that we could repay you for all that we've gained <laughs> by you being here in the course of all these years. I, I think all we can say, each of us, from the bottom of our hearts, a big thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. And as a little tribute, a little uh, memento, maybe not so little, <clears throat> Uh, we really want you out of here, so we're going to give you the chair. Harmonize your chair. Sort of a, an alumnus chair, if you will. And there is a plate on the back. It says, presented to Willard Wilcox in recognition and appreciation for over 30 years as assistant musical director. Please wow. enjoy. Wow. Let Will come up now and talk for a few minutes if you'd like to say a few words. About a month, a month and a half ago, Chris came to me and he said, The board is wanting to do something special for you, that you served as an assistant director for 30 something years. I said, No, 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 that's not necessary. I don't deserve that. I, I'm, I'm fine. He said, no, they're going to do something for you. I said, no, look, just at the end of a rehearsal, have them give me a mug. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are, and this feels awfully good. <laughs> tell you how much I've enjoyed being an assistant director. The, the, thank you to, to Steve and to Joe and these folks that have said some nice things. Thank you to some of you guys that have come, uh, especially for this. Uh, Doug, good to see you. Uh, others of you, great. Thank you for being here. Uh, thanks for the cake. But this, this tribute is more, it's as much for you guys. You guys have given me some unforgettable, wonderful moments in front of you when I've been directing. I, I can't tell you how what that means to me. Uh, you've always been, uh, you've given me your respect and your kindness. Okay, that was, there was that one incident. <laughs> <laughs> I missed one stinking word in the springtime and you never let me forget. <laughs> no, actually, I'm kind of proud of that. <laughs> terrific to me. Uh, you've been attentive, you've been patient with my goofy exercises and warm-up. Uh, I'm a guest. I, don't, I just I feel like I'm at my own funeral. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, and I know you know this, but let me just tell you we, how lucky, very lucky we are to be harmonizers. And I am, I can say this sincerely, I'm the luckiest of Oh, this is, it's how can I have a job with the harmonizers that's so easy, so much fun, and so rewarding? And I've had the privilege of working with four different directors over the years. Uh, let me just tell you, I've learned more from Joe than I've learned from the other three combined. <laughs> the, the guy's a master, and I thank you for those kind words, Joe. I, I, I appreciate that very much. But we are so lucky. As a matter of fact, when hijinks was lucky enough to do some chapter shows in northern Pennsylvania or upstate New York. They were off these little choruses. That, and I've never known a little chorus. I only have known the harmonizers. It's, it's been great. But I didn't know them. But at the end of one of several of these shows, Ann Ruth would come to me and she said, you guys really did good. But she started beating on me. Do you know how lucky you are to be a harmonizer? <laughs> 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 This happened several times. 
But uh, and as I mentioned earlier, I know you guys know that if your wife supports you in this, it makes it so much better. And Anna Ruth has been my wife. And I thank you all for supporting me through all this. It, I, again, I just can't say how much I love doing this. Thank you to Joe, to all of you, uh, for doing this tonight. Uh, it's just overwhelming. I will never forget this night. Thank you. <laughs>